Hi, it's Chris here from DIY Astronomy. Hello. Today I want to talk you through some important steps when choosing your first telescope. First of all, it's really helpful if you can decide what areas of astronomy you're interested in. It's quite important to choose the right tool for the job. If you're purely looking to do visual astronomy and want to look at a little bit of everything out there in space, it's really difficult to beat a Dobsonian design telescope. The name Dobsonian was coined when the late great John Dobson placed a Newtonian telescope on a basic wooden mount that simply moved left, right, up and down. And I can show you one of those now. This is my Heritage 150p by Skywatcher. And it's a single arm tabletop Dobsonian. And as you can see, you can just you can move it up, down, left and right. It's a little bit wobbly here because it's balancing on a bed. But the idea is you put it on your backyard table and it's just nice and quick to grab. You can even make a Dobsonian mount out of a few scraps of wood and some bolts and some Teflon sheets. Here's, a, here's an example I made out of an old cupboard door. So if you're handy with a saw, why not just buy a Newtonian, old Newtonian off eBay and just make yourself a wooden mount out of scraps of wood. The really good thing about this type of mount is it's very cheap to produce, so more money can go into the actual optics with larger mirrors capable of gathering more light. And this is important because our human eyes aren't that sensitive in the dark. So having more light gathering capability in a large mirror will allow you to both resolve more detail on the moon and planets, but also show fainter deep sky objects more brightly. When buying a Dobsonian or Newtonian type of telescope, look out for the letter P. For example, 200P or this one's a 150P. The P stands for parabolic, which shows that the mirror has a figure of a parabola, which brings all the light to the exact same focus so you get sharper images. If the moon and planets are your main interest then a telescope with a basic motor drive might be the way to go for you. For example this Starquest mount here has got a basic right ascension motor drive so if you point this axis to your celestial pole then it will track with the rotation of the earth so keeping your object in the centre of the eyepiece or the, the cam camera sensor. Uh, this optical tube's not really the best thing for planets, but you can get this version, for example, with a Maxitoff telescope on board, which is much better for planets. But I just want to give you an idea of a very cheap basic mount that will automatically trap the sky once you've located the object. Telescopes with a lot of focal length and a good amount of aperture are great for planets. A long focal length telescope makes the planet appear larger and resolution increases with aperture so you can see more detail. Telescopes that have lots of focal length and a good amount of aperture include Schmidt's Cassegrain and Maxitoff Cassegrain telescopes. The only thing to be aware of with these types of telescopes is that there's a glass correct plate at the very front which can be a bit of a dew magnet on cold wet nights so it's a good idea to buy or make a dew shield I have a tutorial on making a, a dew shield which I'll leave in the cards above so you can check that out if you want to. For observing deep sky objects you need plenty of aperture in a dark sky and this is because these deep sky objects tend to be really faint. Again I would point you towards a Dobsonian type telescope, probably something with at least an 8 inch mirror. That's a 200 millimeters, so a, for example, a Skywatcher Skyliner 200p Dobsonian would be a good, good shout. There are a handful of very visually impressive deep sky objects to see, and one or two will even show you a little bit of color, such as the Great Orion Nebulae. But it's probably important for me to point out that the vast majority of deep sky objects tend to appear like little grey smudges. This is because the rods in our eyes, which are responsible for low light vision, don't actually produce much colour information. I think it's fair to say the reason why deep sky astrophotography is so popular is because we get to see and produce detailed colour images and we can share these with others. We can only really dream of like seeing pictures like this with a naked eye but our eyes just aren't as sensitive as a camera sensor. This leads me on to deep sky imaging or DSO imaging for short. If you're new to astronomy and you've been inspired by the deep sky images out there and you want to give it a go, 
I only have one real suggestion for you, and that's to buy yourself a Star Tracker. DSO imaging has quite a steep learning curve and can be quite expensive. From my experience, a Star Tracker is by far the easiest and the cheapest entry point to achieving good results. DSO imaging is all about accurate tracking, counteracting that Earth's rotation, so the photons from distant nebulae and galaxies hitting your camera sensor stay on one spot to produce a sharp image and they don't get smeared across the sensor. Star trackers are designed to carry cameras with short focal length optics, like a camera with a lens, for example, like this, 200 millimeter Super Takamar lens on a Fuji X-T100, but that you can go anywhere up to a small refractor on the Star Track. You could perhaps even go as large as this MIGRES 72, which is a 72 millimeter objective lens ED glass refractor. So something like this you could use on a Star Tracker 2, but you'd get shorter exposures because of the increased focal length, and I'll explain a bit about that in a moment. The shorter the focal length, the easier it is to accurately track the night sky. If you were to buy a telescope with a long focal length for DSO imaging, you'd also need extra equipment to track the sky accurately, such as a guide scope, second camera for guide for guiding, a laptop to run software so you can lock onto that second star for guiding. It just makes th things are just very quickly quite involved. So if you want to take steps into DSO imaging, a Star Trek is a really good way to go. It just takes the steepness out of the uh, learning curve a little bit, but it still kind of gives you good results as well. So it's a really good compromise. Now budget, that's another really important thing to consider. On average, a good quality pair of binoculars is cheaper to buy than a good quality telescope. So if money is tight, I can recommend getting a, a pair of binoculars like these 10x50s. They're low enough magnification to handhold, but they've got a 50mm objective, so it's enough light gathering to show you some things out there. For example, you'd see the craters on the moon, you'd be able to see the, the moons of Jupiter strung out either side of the planet, you'd be able to see some open clusters, you'd be able to see uh, a good sight through binoculars is definitely Andromeda. That's definitely not to be missed. There's a, there's a bunch more, so if money's tight, a pair of binoculars to start with. Binoculars are basically two low power telescopes strapped together. So it's really important to make sure that both sides are aligned with each other. And it's for this reason that I'd, I'd basically just recommend buying new, because if they arrive out of collimation, out of alignment, then you can just simply send them back for a replacement. You can get binoculars for £20 off eBay but if you do that definitely just sort of have a word with the seller just to make sure that they're collimated and that they're going to pack them well for you. Definitely avoid zoom binoculars, they, they don't hold collimation well and they have quite a narrow field of view and the image tends to be quite soft as well so definitely go with a fixed magnification, fixed focal length binocular like, like one of these. I think that's probably enough information for one video. I'll list some recommendations for telescopes and binoculars for each area of astronomy down below. These will be Amazon affiliate links, so if you want to support the channel then that would be much appreciated. If you'd like me to dive a bit deeper into any areas I've covered, just let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do as well. I definitely want to do a video on binocular astronomy as well because I've got quite a bit more to say about that. So if that's something that interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification and just to follow along and get notified of that video if I make that. Also, let me know if you feel that I've missed anything out that's really important. And uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching and clear skies and bye for now.